Okay, welcome to this series where we'll be building a recipes app using Django. So it'll be a full stack app uh, starting from zero all the way to the fully functioning recipes app, doing things like user authentication, creating, updating, deleting recipes, all that stuff. So whether you want to get into full stack development or have an idea that you really want to make, this is a perfect series to get your foot in the door and uh, get started with Django. So let's get into it. Okay, so now I'm gonna start with making the project itself. So I've created an empty directory. So create, your, create an empty directory and CD into it. And I'm gonna be using uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a great, a great editing platform. And so once you've created the empty directory, then you can open it in Visual Studio Code and open the terminal and we can do everything from right in here and if you don't know there's a shortcut on Windows for opening the terminal it's control tilde I think it is so you can get in and out of that easily and so the first thing we're going to want to do now that we have the empty directory is create a virtual environment and so virtual environments basically isolate different different Python projects on your computer so that different packages you install are just isolated to that environment so that they don't break things because different different versions and releases um, depending on what project you're working on so the first thing we're going to do is create a virtual environment I'm going to be doing this on Windows so if you're on Mac or Linux it might be a little bit different in the command line here um, but you can Google that and you should be able to to find it fairly quickly there's tons of tutorials just on that so uh, if you're on Windows you can follow along here we will just type Python space dash m space v e n v and then the name whatever we want to call the virtual environment i'm just going to call it env for environment and then you click enter and now it create creates this folder you can see here in this virtual environment but now we've only created it now we need to activate so once this is done being finalized it should give us a new prompt so now it's been fully created so now we've created it but it's not activated and you will usually see some kind of uh, indication that it's been activated so to activate it you type I guess it's just so to activate that when you're using the Windows command prompt it's just dot slash env slash scripts slash activate env source scripts activate I think should work on Mac I typically use git bash as a terminal but so this command right here dot slash env slash scripts slash activate and now you can see that there's this little env to let us know that it's activated so now any pack Python packages that we download uh, while this environment is activated are just going to be isolated to this environment and not affect uh, any other projects on the computer. So now that that's set up, now we can actually set up the Django project. So to set up the Django project, we're going to need to first uh, install Django. And I'm going to be using Django version 3.2, which is the long-term support. So if I pull up the Django docs here and look at the different versions, you can see 3.2 has this LTS long-term support all the way through 2024 and at the time of this video it's 2022 so um, 4.2 is the next long-term support release coming in 2023 so for this video and for the time being 3.2 should be stable uh, and a good choice so we can go pip which is the Python package manager install and then Django equals equals and then the version 3.2 point star to get the most uh, the latest the latest uh, version 3.2 so it, it wraps onto a new line but that's all on one line pip install Django equals equals 3.1 point two points dot star and hit enter and then it'll download it'll take a little bit of time to download uh, Django and then all of its dependencies so there's a few other packages that Django needs that it will automatically install.
Okay, and so now that it's been successfully installed, uh, you can see you might get this warning to upgrade PIP version. And you, you can go ahead and upgrade it if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward. Uh, it, it shouldn't cause any problems, but now that these are installed, we can type in PIP space list to get a view of our current packages. So if we bring this up, we can see pip list and then these are the packages that we have installed in this environment. So we have Django, ASGII ref, uh, Pytes, SQL parse, and Django, the version there, 3.2.13. And so the next thing we need to do now that we have it installed is actually set up the, the Django project. So when we installed this, we get this command Django-admin. And if you just type that in, then it shows you all of the possible commands subcommands so you see there's a, a bunch of them a few of them we'll be using a lot but the very first one to start off will be to start this project will be Django dash admin space and then start project all one word and then space the name of the project and so I'm gonna there's a few different ways you can do this and it basically just comes down to how you want to have the file system structured the way I'm gonna do it may, is the mo makes the most sense to me and I think it's the easiest um, and the less the less cluttered so you can do this way as well so I like to call it config because it'll have the project settings in there and then space period which means start that create that project in this directory so if you didn't use the period it would create another directory so you would basically just have an extra folder and I think it just is easier uh, if you created this separate directory up here to just have everything in there. So that's Django-admin start project space the name of the project config space period so that it's created in this directory. Click enter. And then we should see some files get created. So now you can see that we have this con config file. And it's given us some base Um, some some base files and settings. So if we look through that, we have this asgi.py and wizgi.py, which we don't need to worry about. That's the actual uh, web server that uh, we use for the development while we're in development, while we're on our local machine. Then we have the settings.py, which uh, is an important file, is all the settings for the whole project. So we'll be updating this uh, throughout. But you can see there's things like a secret key, uh, which adds a little security. Um, installed apps, which we'll talk about, and then a, a lot of other settings, which we'll talk about when uh, when those come up. But for now, we don't need to worry about that. And then there's also URLs.py, which we will be touching on more in depth in the next video. But basically, it handles uh, what pages, what what routes in the browser show what pages and, and what information. So. Um, now that we actually have this project set up, we can jump back into the terminal and we can try and get it up and running. So now that we've set up the project, we get this manage.py file, which contains a lot of subcommands that we'll use to um, without with the project. One of them is actually getting the server up and running. So when you start the project, you get a local development server. So if you type Python, Oops, space manage.py space run server. That's all one word, Python space manage.py space run, run server. You'll see that you get this. Um, you'll first you'll get a warning, which you don't need to worry about for now. We'll take care of that. But then you also see uh, starting development server at this URL 127.0.0.1 which is also called localhost on the port 8000. So if you control click we can follow this and I will bring this over to this new browser and voila you can see that uh, the install worked successfully. You're seeing this page because debug equals true which is in our settings and this is amazing. So this project is up and running. It's set set up. The server is running. Um, 
if you make changes to the Django project and save them, they should be updated on the site, on, on the, the live page. But if they're not, sometimes you need to restart the server. And so to do that, you click Control Z. Sometimes you need to click it more than, more than once, but that stops the server. And then if you wanted to get it up and running again, you would just run that same command, Python space manage, Python space manage dot py run server and then the server would start back up again and you would be able to uh, go into your browser and access access the pages we can refresh that refresh this and you see that it's working with this cool little rocket ship so awesome so this is the first video in the next video we're going to talk about creating an application and actually getting stuff displayed on the site as always, if it video is helpful, I'm gonna start putting out this Django series. Uh, so a like would be really appreciated. I uh, take some effort to make the video. So if it, if you enjoyed it and it uh, helped you with anything, touch you anything, leaving a like or a comment uh, is awesome. And I'll see you in the next video.